Good evening, church. Let's give the Lord some praise. Let's give our God some praise. We can do better than that. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He's given us a reasonable portion of help and strength. Our bed wasn't our cooling board this morning, nor our sheets our winding sheets. If you have breath in your body, why don't you stand, if you can, and give God some praise? David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast unto the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And you know what he said. Oh, magnify. Woo! Is there anybody that can magnify? On this night of revival, let's magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord. He heard my cry and delivered me from all my fear. Their faces were radiant and they were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord delivered me out of all my fears. The angel of the Lord encampeth all around. Oh, taste and see. Woo. Is it good? Oh, taste and see. Come on now, this is a revival. Oh, taste and see. Woo. Anybody ever taste it? Woo. Ain't he good? <laughs> Ain't he good? Fear him, O oh ye saints. Those that fear him should lack nothing. The young lions suffer and hunger. But they that fear the Lord shall lack Woo. no good thing. If you're in this place tonight, you ought to be giving God praise. If you're online tonight, give God praise. Let's revive us, Lord. Revive us, oh Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Is that all you got? Why don't you give him a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! I'm going to stop for your sake because God has been good in my life. Has he been good in your life? Amen, amen. Give the Lord some praise. Woo, Jesus! Let me thank God for the angel of this house, the Reverend Dr. Claiborne Lee Jr. As we kick off this second night of revival, we thank God for Dr. Jerry M. Carter on tonight. God fill him afresh with your love. And we're gonna go to the throne of grace right now. If you're online and you have a prayer request, why don't you put it in the chat so that we might pray for you as well. Will you bow with me just for a minute? Mm. Whew. Let us go boldly, oh God, here we are. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We know that if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be, God? God, we thank you that we are not just praying, but you allow us to pray, oh God. You allow us to call on you and you hear us, God. God, we thank you for revival on tonight, God. We thank you for your love, your care, your mercy. God, you've been good in our lives and we give you the glory, God. Somebody needs a healing tonight, God. Somebody is in the hospital bed, oh God. Somebody is in the triage nurse, God. Somebody is in surgery right now, God, and we'll be so bold right now, God, just to even say that they'll see the discharge, nurse, God. We believe you, Father. Thank you, God, for healing, God, for your exceeding, above 
abundant mercy, God. We say all these things right now because we believe you, God. We believe you right now, God. Somebody has something on their mind, God. Somebody is going through depression. Somebody is suicidal, God. Somebody is sick and need a word on tonight, God. And we give you the glory, God, and we thank you. It's in the mighty, matchless, miraculous, magnanimous name of he who is Savior and Lord, nonetheless Jesus, Jesus from Nazareth, that is, it's in his mighty name we pray, amen. Oh, come on, if God is your everything tonight, come on, let your worship resound in the room. Oh, come on, if God is your everything tonight, come on. Let worship resound in the room. Come on, this is your turn. Open up your mouth. I know we're just getting settled into our seats, and I know we're just coming off of a long day of work, but you should be able to consider his goodness. <laughs> uh, he considers us daily. Every time he wakes us up and puts our name on the wake-up list, come on, he's chosen us again. Come on. Isn't that a good realization to be fortunate to be able to witness the fact that God chose us again. And the beauty, Sister Cassandra, is he chose us by name. He called us by name. We are his children and he is our father. So come on, one time, all over the building, hands raised. Let your worship resound. Open your mouth. Come on, let glory fill the atmosphere. If you got a relationship with him, this is your turn. Thank you, God. Oh, we love you, Lord. Come on, come on. Come on, we don't stop. Come on. This isn't a performance. This is worship. Come on, corporate worship. Open up your mouth and worship him. Oh, oh, oh. thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You're everything to yeah. us. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, right there. You're everything to Yes, Lord, not for what you've done, but for who you are, God. Without you, we are nothing, for you are the life, you are the air that we breathe. It is in you that we live, move, and have our very being, and we reflect on the fact tonight that you are everything to us. Oh, Lord. Hey, come on, let the worshipers rise up. Open up your mouth and elevate. He's everything, everything. You're everything to me. You're everything. He's everything, everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything, God. Everything to me. You're everything. You're everything to me. Say life and breath. Life and breath. Thing to me, say your 
that one time. Come on, say it if you need them. You're my surpasses all understanding. He is peace. You're my peace. And we say, Master, Master, we call you Savior. Savior. We call you Lord. Yes, you are Jesus. You are Say shelter. shelter, you're shelter from the storm, provider, yeah, yeah. say healer, healer. Oh, say father. father, come on, if he's been, somebody knows him, deliverer, deliverer. come on, somebody knows him to be a hey, deliverer. Deliver us. Deliver us. Oh, yeah. oh, say he's our father. father. Yes, he is. He's our father. father. He is God, the three in one. He's our father. father. And the Son and the Holy Ghost. Say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, call him like you know him. Say Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Say Jesus. Jesus. Oh, say Jesus. 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 
Everybody worship the Lord. Come on, this is your turn. Come on. This isn't a performance. Come on. Come on and worship the Father. Come on. Everybody, come on, get together. Come on, find your praise partner if you need to. Come on, get with yourself. Come on, worship is vertical. Come on. It's time between you and the Father. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, think of what he is to you. Come on, think of what he is in his nature. Come on, think of what he is by his character. Come on, his word never fails. And his promises are sure. Come on, if you need to remember him by his track record, worship the God of your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said let worship fill the atmosphere. One more time, worship the God of your salvation. Think about it tonight. Oh, you're everything to me. Everybody see everything. Everything. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. See everything. Everything. You're everything to me. You're everything. You are everything. Come on, think about everything it. Just say, everything. Come on. Everything. Just come on, open up your lips. Give them the fruit of your lips tonight. You're everything to me. Everything. Ooh, everything. Everything. Ooh, yeah. Everything to me. Everything. Come on, right here. I just challenge you. I just challenge you to think of what he is to you. Come on. I promise this is not a game tonight. This is not for fame, fortune, or fashion. But think about what he is to you. Come on. Don't look at me. Come on. If you got to close your eyes and wave your hands, think about what he is to you. Come on. He is Jesus. He is God. And he's God all by himself. Come on. He don't need anybody else's help. Come on. We need him. Come on. Worship Jesus tonight. Thank you. Holy Spirit, I promise if you call him, he'll answer. For he inhabits our praise and wherever the sound of praise is that's where he will be come on wherever the cries of his children are that's where he will come come on let him hear you tonight come on if you need him let him hear you tonight come on i promise if you call him by his name he will answer for he is not the god that forsakes us he promised to never leave us nor forsake us come on this is your turn oh three one two three come on everybody wants to the You're everything to me. Come on, don't get tired. Come on. You're everything to me. Ooh, you're everything to me. Oh, you're everything to me. Yeah, come on, I feel good. Say, you're everything to me. Oh, 
You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Everything to me. The Bible says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That it is in him that we live, that we move, and that we have our very being. He is everything. And the only question tonight is whether or not the Lord is your everything. Because when he is your everything, then you turn to him and trust him and believe him and expect from him and worship him and honor him and adore him and love him and pray to him and serve him and give yourself to him and sacrifice yourself for him. Hallelujah to his name. And when the Lord is really your everything, when you don't have materially everything as a resource, when you know he's your everything, then you know that whatever you need, he can supply. Hallelujah to his name. We give him thanks tonight for being our everything. To all of you that gather with us tonight throughout the United States of America, certainly in the state of California, and those of you that are part of our congregation from around the world in other countries that have a significant time zone difference at whatever hour you are sharing with us, we are so grateful to God to have all of you all sharing with us and to have the privilege of being able to connect even through technology as well as in person to join together and allow the Lord to do some awesome and some mighty things. How many of y'all were here last night? Amen. If you logged in last night, just put in, I was online last night. Just put that in the chat. I was on last night because it was on last night in the house of the Lord. Amen. Bishop John E. Guns just came on in here and in the words of Bishop Walter Thomas, preached a fit on us. And uh, we are so grateful to God for him when the long way is the right way. Yeah, yeah, God be praised for that word last night. We're gonna prepare ourselves to worship God through giving and our music ministry is going to share with us again, and then we are going to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. I want to encourage you to give as liberally as you can this week each night. Those of you that are joining us virtually through our online campus, as well as those of you that are physically in the sanctuary, if you can give no less than $20, God will bless you for that. If you can give more than that, God will bless you all the more because the more you give, the more he gives to you. And so I encourage you to do so and know that God will bless you. And listen, never get upset with a preacher when you don't have what was asked for. Yeah, you can't give what you don't have. And I tell you what, but if you give what you can, whatever that may be, a prayer, a praise, a wave, a dollar, then God will look at what's in your heart. And when God sees that what's in your heart is a reflection of what's in your hand, then God will honor your hand because it's attached to your heart. For where your treasure is, Jesus says, there will your heart be also. And we thank you in advance for what God is going to do in our time of giving. Would you lift your devices? Lift your offerings unto the Lord, even those of you that are at home, at work, on vacation, in the car, wherever you are. Let's pray together. Keep at least one hand on the wheel if you're in the car. At least one hand on the wheel. At least one. God, we thank you so much for your goodness and for your mercy, for your provisions. Your word promises that you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And God, you continue to be faithful to your word. Now, God, receive what we give. If it had not come from you, we would not have it to give to you. And so we first say thank you. And then, God, we ask you to bless this seed that we sow into fertile soil, that it may bring forth and reap a harvest of righteousness unto your glory. And we believe that your word is so true 
that because we were willing to release, then we've made ourselves candidates to receive. That if we give, it shall be given unto us, good measure shaken together, pressed down, and running over will people give into our bosom. And so we thank you in advance for what's going to come back to us in whatever form you so deem it. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're using your smart device in the sanctuary or those of you that are joining us virtually tonight, I encourage you to go ahead and give even now. Those of you that are in the sanctuary physically that desire to bring your gifts physically unto the Lord, why don't you come now and bring your gifts to the basket at the center of the altar and God will bless you and honor you. I'm always encouraged when I see children giving. I'm always encouraged uh, to see parents teaching their children principles of Christian stewardship early on in life and you are setting them up for enormous blessings in the future amen God be praised Bible does say train up a child in the way that they should go when they're old man you they shall not depart from it and so we thank God and thank you for your kindness and for your gifts and ushers, if you would make sure you have a basket for those uh, that may want to give towards the end of our worship experience that come in after this moment. God be praised. Well, it's preaching time. I'm super duper excited. So let me be, let me engage in full disclosure. Um, this week is for me. <laughs> Yeah, this is for me. I'm selfish this week. This is for me. Um, somebody asked on one occasion, what feeds you? What makes your heart sing? And the joy and the blessing of close, meaningful, unconditional, enduring friendship makes my heart sing and blesses my life, renews me and enriches me. And so to have this time to just be with John E. Guns and to be with Dr. Jerry Carter is reviving for me personally. And uh, to be able to have the additional benefit of sitting at their feet and being able to hear the word of God through their anointed gift is a plus that I share with you. So tell me thank you. <laughs> Dr. Jerry M. Carter Jr. is a native of the Ohio State. <laughs> and we met many years ago, as some of you all have heard me say before, when I first started pastoring in New Jersey, he was already pastoring in Morristown, New Jersey, and the Lord blessed us to meet and knitted our spirits, and over the years, uh, the knitting of that fabric has gotten tighter and tighter and tighter. I have a very short list, and I say this in this internet age uh, with full knowledge of how dangerous this can be, but I have a short list of peers who are my favorites and I won't divulge uh, the list though it's short and does not require all five of my fingers but this preacher is one of those I can listen to Jerry Carter every week that God sends because he is one of the most tremendous, thoughtful, theological, and thorough prognosticators of the gospel of the late 21st and now this, the first portion of the 20th and of the first part of the 21st century. I mean, he is able to teach it. He's a professor of homiletics, and he can do it. Everybody that can do it can't teach it. And everybody that can teach it can't do it. He can do both and 
and God has blessed his heart for God. God has blessed his mind that he has given to God. And I am grateful to call him one of my dearest friends and brothers and am grateful to have this opportunity to be blessed by his homiletical genius. And so if you would pray with him and for him with everything that I said about him that is true and more that I don't have time to say, he still needs prayer and he still needs the anointing of the Holy Spirit that he may make known unto us the mysteries of the gospel. And so if you would, even now, just point in his direction and say, Dr. Carter, welcome back. We're praying. We're believing. We're expecting that God will use you to speak to us and gain glory for God's self. Preach the gospel. Our worship team shares with us and we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ through his son and servant in the person of the Reverend Dr. Jerry M. Carter, Jr., Senior Pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church of Morristown, New Jersey. Hear ye him. Come on, put your hands together. We're going to take it back just a little bit. Y'all know this one. Woo! This is still the day that the Lord has made. Yes, Lord. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, anybody glad to celebrate another day of life? Yeah, it's yeah, a gift. Yeah, yeah. So let's praise the God that gave it to us. Y'all know it, everybody. Come on, catch yourself. Oh, oh, oh. That the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has you know it. made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be I glad in it. I have no other choice. But this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. Come on, everybody. In God. One more time, say, say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, tell your neighbor, come on, look at somebody, find him and say, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. And be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. So we say, Hallelujah. So we bless your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We lift you high. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Hallelujah. We bless your name. See, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice. Come on, we have no other choice. We might as well do it. See, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. See, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Gracious God, we thank you for the absolute total sufficiency of Jesus Christ. And uh, thank you for being able to be in church for those of us who are here and then for those of us who are joined virtually, God, remotely. We praise God just for the whole congregation tonight. Thank you for revival. Because we do need to live again. And we pray that you would bless this word to simply fall into the flow and the fellowship and the fruitfulness of what you've already been doing tonight and last night. For this, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this is the day the Lord has made. And we rejoice and we are glad in this day. God is a great God and has allowed us to be here one more, one more night and um, grateful for being able to be in church and be in church alive. <laughs> um, I'm always blessed by the amazing ministry that you have here at Mount Calvary Church. Um, just really, and sometimes you can be so close to what you have that you don't know it. But you have incredible ministry here, uh, just amazing music and artists who are here. Just uh, thank you all. And then your leadership here, your staff, just the hospitality is, uh, is incredible, and I don't take that for granted and neither should you because God has uh, richly uh, blessed this congregation so I just want to thank you all just for your ministry here and um, for the word we heard last night from my brother Bishop Guns I've been um, I've been feeding on that all, all day long. And then to be here with your pastor, uh, who is my, uh, my, you, you know, I believe in an economy of words because words are expensive. So I'm careful how I use them. But uh, he is friend and brother and the Lord as in, in his language has knitted us together over the years last few years we've kind of journeyed through some stuff together and uh, I'm grateful that he has been there for me I had some days I know I would have gone crazy had it not been for Dr. Clayvon Lee and so I want to thank him publicly just for the pilgrimage that we've been on. And um, I'm not just saying all this because he said what he said about me. Matter of fact, I, I paid him to say all that. <laughs> but he didn't pay me anything, at least not for saying this. <laughs> but you have one of God's most important preaching voices and leaders right here in this church. Yeah. Um, And once again, I use those words carefully and intentionally, both preacher and leader for this church and beyond for the kingdom of God. You have a kingdom leader here and a kingdom preacher here. One more time, it's not redundant for us to bless God for him and for his ministry. Um, what time is it? What time is it? 7.45? It's 10.45. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> so whenever I come west, 
I need a very loud vocal congregation. Otherwise, who knows what I might say because it's 1045, so I know you have those masks on, but I need you to help me wake me up here because it's, it's bedtime. Uh, for just a few moments, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 12, a familiar passage, but it's just a little something, there's a, there's a line here that caught me. Uh, second Samuel is right after first Samuel <laughs> chapter 9 verse 12 <laughs> Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah and all who lived in Zeba's house became Mephibosheth's servants. Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. Now he was lame in both his feet. Amen. You may be seated. Mephibosheth had a young son. His name was Micah, and all who lived in Zeba's house became Mephibosheth's servants. Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. Now he was lame in both his feet. I want to preach from the subject uh, flawed and favored. <laughs> flawed and <laughs> favored. The cost cost of a Rolex watch can be as <clears throat> as less expensive or as least expensive, quote unquote, as $5,000 to $6,000 and can be most expensive as the most expensive Rolex watch ever made, which is $17 million owned by actor Paul Newman. A an average Seiko watch costs about $400. And you can pick it up at any Target or Walmart in the neighborhood. The irony is that the Seiko watch is more accurate at keeping time than a Rolex watch. That's because the Seiko watch operates by what's called quartz movements. The Rolex watch operates by what's called mechanical movements. And quartz movements keep more accurate time than mechanical movement watches. But what makes the Rolex watch so expensive and so valuable is uh, not its accuracy, has everything to do with the hands that made it <coughs> and the materials, the, the, the rare steel that went into its production. So in a very real sense, the Rolex watch is flawed but favored. <laughs> flawed because it has a deficiency. <laughs> favored because of who made it. And I would just imagine that if Mephibosheth had the microphone tonight, he might use the same words to describe himself. By the time you get to the end of 2 Samuel chapter 9, the conclusion about Mephibosheth is that he indeed is favored and flawed. Not favored but flawed, but favored, and everything was peaceful and calm for King David. He had finally arrived to who he was supposed to be. He became king. He became king. It was a long, curvaceous, circuitous route, but eventually he made it to being who he was supposed to be. 
Then he also made it to where he was supposed to be. For now, he was residing in the city of Jerusalem, which was the epicenter of salvation history. So now he's in Jerusalem, having moved from Hebron. David was who he was supposed to be. He was where he was supposed to be. And then he had done what he was supposed to do. That is, he had gone back to the town and the house of Obed-Edom. And Bible readers are acquainted with the fact that he retrieved that wooden box called the Ark of the Covenant. And as he's bringing it back into the city, you, you know that he spontaneously broke out into a praise dance right there in the middle of the street. It was not some rehearsed choreographed dance, but it seemed to have been pretty spontaneous as he couldn't help it. He, he got close to the city and got close to uh, the temporary tent where he was going to house this art. He couldn't wait till he got to church. And on his way to Mount Calvary, he, he had to stop right there and have church and give God the glory as he is worshiping God. One of his wives, McCall, is looking out the window. She is observing his praise. And, and because she was observing his praise, she had the space to become a critic of his praise. It's difficult to be a critic um, if you are a participant. It's easy to be a critic if you are an observer. And she was looking out her window, and she was observing David. He gets home. She looks at him. She sarcastically said, didn't the king look good, make a fool of himself in front of all the sisters with all of his sensual gyrations? David looked at her and said, you are mistaken that the sisters were not my real audience. Jehovah was my audience. And the reason why he was my audience, because he chose me to be king over anybody in your father, your grandfather's household. And he looked at her and he said, furthermore, <laughs> if you think you've seen something, just hold on for a little while because I plan on becoming more undignified than this. David had become who he was supposed to be. <laughs> you don't hear me. He had arrived where he was supposed to be. And he had done what he was supposed to do. Now life was peaceful for him. It was peaceful for him. Chapter 8 says that the Lord had enabled him to accomplish and achieve military victories, which were, just, which, which were evident of God's hand on David. Now, in the midst of living in peace and prosperity... David raises this strange interrogative, this strange question. He, he called his servants in front of him, and he said, Is there anybody alive from the household of Saul, which was the enemy's household, who is still alive, to whom I might show hesed, kindness? And that's kind, hesed is kindness that's uncaused. It's kindness because of nothing. It's unconquerable benevolence. It's kindness that you can't earn. He said, is there anybody left from the enemy's household upon whom I can pour out and favor them with kindness? Isn't it something that God poured out kindness on us in salvation that was uncaused? Okay, there was nothing about you that merited or earned God's kindness. Matter of fact, Paul said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the young guy. I mean, there was nothing about, and the reason why that blesses me is because if there was nothing about me that caused him to love me, then there's nothing about me that can cause him to stop loving me. <laughs> okay, we don't know when to shout. He, but, but David said, is there anybody? who's left from the household of Saul. Somebody raises their hand, uh, Zeba, and said, um, uh, yes, there is one uh, Mephibosheth 
who is crippled or lame in both of his feet. David said, bring him here. And Mephibosheth is brought before David. He's there before David. And, and, and as he is there, as he's lying there, as he's been assisted, he's standing, he's there before David, and he's trembling in fear. David notices it, looks at him, and says, Mephibosheth, do not fear. Don't fear because I'm not going to do any harm, number one. And then I'm going to restore to you everything that rightfully belongs to you. And Mephibosheth was fearful because he knew what he deserved. Okay. He knew that because he belonged to the enemy's household, that he deserved to be executed. Okay. Third time, he knew that because he belonged to the enemy's household, he knew what he deserved. But David looked at him and said, literally today, you're going to be preserved because of mercy on one hand and grace on the other hand. Mercy because I'm not going to give you what you do deserve. And that's death. But then grace because I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. And that is the restoration of land. Look, 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 if your seat is occupied on today, it's because both mercy and grace has kept you alive to this. Okay, am I looking at anybody here who says, no, the only reason I'm still here is because mercy didn't give me what I do deserve, and grace has given me what I do not deserve. Here is Mephibosheth, who is the embodiment of God's mercy and grace and is therefore what I consider favored on today. Let the church say favored. Hey. Notice real quickly how favored he is. He, 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 he's, he's the living embodiment of God's favor. How favored is he? He is favored. He's been favored with some servants. Okay, because David looks at this fellow by the name of Zeba, who happens to be on staff in David's household. He said, Zeba, I want you and your sons and your servants to all now farm Mephibosheth's land. Okay, if Mephibosheth has some land to be farmed, it must mean he has some land. <laughs> I'm not real smart, but if he needs some servants, come on, help me preach to farm this land. It must mean that all of a sudden he now has this young, uh, lame, crippled young man now has some land and he has some servants. His servants are going to help him to prosper. He will no longer have to beg. He will no longer be impoverished because the Lord, the king has placed in his life what's necessary for him to prosper. Favor in this sense looks like the material. Favor in this sense looks like physical prosperity. Favor in this sense looks like what is visible. And, and I'm here to tell you that God is able to bless you with some visible stuff. Don't be ashamed if God's favor has worked it out so that you're doing some stuff that people could have never imagined, that you're working some places you could have never dreamed of, that you may be driving and living and dressing in ways that you could never dream of. Don't be ashamed if God's favor has manifested itself in some very visible ways. But however, I stopped by here to let you know on tonight that God's favor many times looks like the invisible more than it does the visible. And we need to know that on today because when most people talk about God's favor, they always refer to material blessings. But material acquisition is not always the result of God's favor. And God's favor can work itself out sometimes on the level of the invisible. I, uh, not too long ago, <clears throat> I saw this fancy sports car that had on the license plate, favor. Well, whoever the owner of that car was associated, the ownership of that car, with God's favor. Uh, and I said to myself, I wish I had that kind of sports car to put favor on the license plate. But then I thought about it. And I said, I got some other stuff. I got joy unspeakable. I can put favor on that. I got peace that passes all understanding. 
I can put favor on. Okay, help me preach this. Look, if you got a, if you had a good night's sleep last night, favor. If you still have your sanity after all we've been through over the past two or look, our four parents after having gone through chattel slavery and the viciousness and the disappointment of, of all that they went through and they're still alive and they still made it, that's what you call favor. My grandmother Helen Jackson singing glory to his name when she owned nothing. Faith. Am I looking at anybody here who says, I got some invisible stuff on which I can label it God's? He had servants. He had servants. Fifteen of Zeba's sons. All of Zeba's servants. He had 20 servants. Fifteen sons. And then Zeba himself. Now, I'm not real smart, but I think that equals 36. <laughs> What would Mephibosheth need with 36 servants? The king overdid it. I said the king overdid it. Favor sometimes overdoes it. The God that I serve doesn't just fill my cup, but my cup. The God that I serve. I told you it was late. I need you to help me. here. He, he doesn't just put fish in the net, but he breaks the net. The God that I serve many times goes overboard to make me productive. <laughs> How favored is Mephibosheth? He's favored, first of all, with some servants, but he's also favored with the city. <laughs> yeah, because it says that now he lives in Jerusalem. Two or three times it says that. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, and according to the law of repetition, that must mean that's pretty central, that he now lives in Jerusalem. And the reason why that's central is because when Ziba identified Mephibosheth, he said that he lives in a place called Lodabar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, 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 and the bar, the word the bar in Hebrew means word. And whenever you put lo in front of anything, it means that negates that. So whatever else that means, it means that the place he's from is a place where there's no word. <laughs> the place where there's no pasture. I'll preach before myself. A place where there's no crops. A place where there's no productivity. That's where he came from. But now, he's in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city of David. Help me preach. Jerusalem, the city of Zion. Jerusalem. The epicenter of God's divine activity. Jerusalem. The place that where, where the ark was located. Matter of fact, heaven is called the new Jerusalem. Okay, hold on. I came from Lodabar. But now I live in Jerusalem. And, and what that means is that my new location has changed my status. Location changes your status. That's why Harriet Tubman worked so hard to get slaves from the south to the north or to Canada because she knew that if you were in a new location, it would give you a new status. Okay, maybe that didn't do anything for you. Come here, Paul. Paul said one of my favorite statements is in Christos, in Christ, in Christ. If you're in Christ, you got a new reality. If anybody be in Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are whole. They are new creations. All things are become new. Uh, everything has. Uh, all things have become new. The old has passed away. In Christ, there's neither male nor female, bond nor free, Jew nor Gentile. In Christ, we are the righteousness of God. In Christ, we have been raised together and sit in heavenly places together. I'm trying to tell you, even if you're not a shouter, you ought to blink an eye and tell him thank you for the fact that my new location has changed my status. I am in Christ, and because I'm in Christ, I am favored. How favored was he? I'm sorry, I'm taking too long on this. How, how favored? What, look, 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 he was so favored that he had servants. He was favored with the city, but he was also favored with a seat. <laughs> I love the way the Bible outlines itself without any help from, he has a new seat there at, here at the king's table. Verse 13, do you see it? For he always ate at the king's table. That's the third time. That's repeated in chapter 9. Must be something special about being at the king's table. Do you know what he got at the king's table? 
he got some new partnerships because he came from low to bar where he was by himself. But now he got some new brothers and sisters. Because guess who else was at the table? Amnon, clever and witty. Absalom, handsome and winsome. Tamar, beautiful and blemishless. Joab, masculine and muscular. You don't hear me. Uh, what's his name? Solomon, erudite and precocious. All of them were at the table now with this young boy by the name of Mephibosheth. What does he have at the table? He has some new partnerships. What does he have at the table? He also has provision because if, if he's at the table, then he's eating the king's food. And if he came from low to bar, that means he came from a place where there was very little food. Now he has everything he wants to eat because my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. What does he have at the table? He has partnerships. He has uh, some provision. He also has protection because if you're at the king's table, just know he is going to take care of you because he's investing so much in you. As a matter of fact, that's why you can go to bed tonight and not worry about what that the God is going to take care of you. He has invested too much in you for him not to take care of you. He was highly favored. Favored. Favored with some servants. Favored with the city. Favored with the seat. And I wish tonight that I could close on that. Because isn't, is, I mean, uh, uh, isn't that a wonderful, I wish you could just get on the organ and back me up just right there because that is such an amazing close. We could go home shouting on the fact that when God favors you, he favors you with servants, he favors you with a city, he favors you with a seat, but I was just playing, hold on for just a minute. But it doesn't end I wish, look at the last thing that said in verse 13. Now he was lame in both feet. <sighs> Why is that the last thing? Why does the narrator have to be so negative? We already knew, right, that he was lame. Hmm in both feet because when Zeba first identified him he said there is a son of Jonathan and a grandson of Saul who is crippled lame this is the third time that is mentioned that he was lame in both feet the literary uh, trajectory is strange here because it's the last thing that's said about him He's lame. We all know uh, uh, that, that, that when he was a little boy, that his nurse, his babysitter, was carrying him. And, and in her haste, having heard that his father, and I wish I had two Bible readers here, his, his father and his grandfather had been slain in battle. His babysitter assumed that he was probably going to be next. So in her haste, she was running. And, and as she ran, she, fe that she, she, she dropped uh, Mephibosheth and he fell. And so his crippledness or his dysfunction was as a result of a fall. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, second time. His, his dysfunction was, was as a result of a fall. Third time, his dysfunction was the result of a, he was dropped and he felt, please don't look at me like that because he's not the only one who's had a dysfunction. I'm looking at, at a whole congregation full of people who have some kind of flaw and dysfunction and it is as the result of a fault. Come here, Paul. Paul said it. I don't know. Romans chapter 5. He said, by one person's disobedience. I wish we could shout off a of doctrine. All were made sinners that when Adam sinned, you sinned as well because all of us were represented in the Adam, in that first person. Therefore, the curse of death fell upon everybody and therefore everybody in Mount Calvary has some kind of flaw or some kind of dysfunction. That's why it takes more than education to deal with our flaws. 
That's why it takes more than money in our communities to deal with our flaws. Just like you, I am anxiously awaiting some of the results from yesterday's election, trying to figure out which, which way the Congress is going to go. But really, really, when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter if it's Republicans or Democrats. They cannot deal with some of our fundamental flaw. Our fundamental flaw is called sin. And that's why, that's why, yeah, I appreciate preaching social justice and all of that. But please, preachers, don't forget to preach the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Because social justice cannot handle, cannot deal with my fundamental flaw, which is sin. All that does is cut the dandelions from the surface of the ground. But if you don't deal with the root of my problem, the dandelions are just going to keep coming up. <laughs> Look, 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 look. He, he was lame. And I leave you here in both feet. That's the last thing that's said about him. Anybody wonder why? Whatever else the narrator is saying, he's saying that this young man, just like you, was favored, but he was flawed. Okay. Favored and flawed. The fact that it's mentioned again means that the king is aware of his flaws and called him to the table knowing what he brought in terms of, look, 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 God is aware of your flaws. And God factored your flaws into your salvation and into your calling. Okay, we don't know when to shout. Okay, let me see somebody I can preach to. Look, that when he called you, God's flaws do not catch God off guard. Our flaws catch each other off guard. And we start tripping when we find out this. Or find, but listen, God does not celebrate our flaws. He wants us to grow out of them and all that. But they do not catch him. Oh, can I talk on tonight? God knew Abraham and Sarah had lion problems when he called them to be the father and the mother of the whole world. You don't hear me. God knew Noah had drinking problems when he told him to build the ark. God knew that Elijah uh, had a predisposition for depression when he told him to call down fire upon Mount Carmel. God knew Peter was gangster when he said, follow me. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had a revival church on tonight. Aren't you glad that God factored in your flaws? He factored them into when he called you. As a matter of fact, that's probably why he called you. Because if you, if you were too perfect, he couldn't have used you. Because you would have been too self-dependent. But your flaws put you on your knees. Come on, your flaws keep you dependent. Am I looking at anybody here tonight who just wants to take a moment and give God glory, not for the fact that you're favored, but give him glory for your flaws on tonight? Don't celebrate them, <laughs> but give him glory for the fact that when he called you, he already knew you. He says, it says here that, that he was lame in both feet. Whatever else that says, it says that God knows your flaws. But then it also says that you should not allow your flaws to keep you from the table. <laughs> please. And I, and I don't mean to bother you, but just look at somebody even with that mask on. Tell them, please, don't let your flaws keep you from if Mephibosheth wanted to. He, he probably could have ordered room service. <laughs> If he wanted to, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, he, M M Mephibosheth could have door dashed some food so that he wouldn't have to be bothered with the stairs of the whole people who were at the table. But if, if he were here tonight, he would tell you, I, 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 I took my seat every night at the king's table in spite of what anybody thought about me. And that was because I was not there based on their estimation of me. I was there based on the king's estimation of me. 
And if the king says I can eat the king's table, then I'm not worried about what all my brothers and sisters are saying because as a matter of fact, they all had flaws too. Come on, help me preach. Absalom had flaws. Amnon had flaws. Tamar had flaws. Joab had flaws. And Lord knows Solomon had flaws. The only difference is that they could masquerade theirs because their flaws were not obvious to everybody in Mount Calvary. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear me here. There was a whole group of people who was able, who were able to put tailor-made suits over their flaws. They were able to put dresses and suits over there. They were able to put makeup on and hair over their flaws. But I want you to know everybody at the table. Talk to me, talk to me, talk, talk to me. Mephibosheth, he says, I had to make my way to the table. Because actually, when I sat at the table, the, flat, the fact that I was crippled was covered. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Some of y'all haven't moved all night. <laughs> but that's because maybe you don't have any lameness. But you need to make your way to the table of salvation. Because Mephibosheth said, when I sat at the table, I was the same as everybody from waist up because my feet were underneath the table of salvation. The reason why folks don't know more about you than they could is because God covers you. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody, I'm covered on tonight. I, 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 I'm covered. That's why I hurry to the table. That's why I make my way to the table because he covers me. He doesn't cover me simply so that I can, he, he can condone me. He covers me until I get it right. He covers me as he works on me. Well, good day. May the Lord bless you real good. And I wish I could close it right there because that's a great place to close it. But the fact that the last thing said about Mephibosheth is that he was lame in both feet. That's the last thing said about him. And whatever else that means, that means that, that, that there's some flaws that you're just going to have to live with. <laughs> Let me close my Bible. I'm done. Y'all can't take no more. There's some flaws, some stuff that's just going to not go away. And I know that may fly in the face of some uh, uh, sanctification theories that we have that you can be perfected. But I want you to know that there are some flaws that you're going to have to take to the grave with you. You don't have to necessarily indulge in them and all of that, but there's some stuff about you. There's some defects about you that you're not going to be able to get away from. The Lord may deliver you from some levels of alcoholism, but you may have to struggle with the taste of alcohol for the rest of your life because there's some flaws that you just have to live with. Because the fact that he is favored in that one verse, it says that he, he, he has servants. He lives in Jerusalem. Yeah, and, and he has a seat at the king's table. But then the last thing that's said about him is that he's lame in both feet. And whatever, whatever, whatever that says on tonight, that says that favor doesn't always transform your flaws, but favor will override your flaws. I got to leave you on tonight. But is there anybody here who wants to celebrate the fact that favor override your flaws some of y'all looking at me real crazy I think I need a witness here come here Paul Paul said because I had been lifted up to the third and the fourth and the fifth heavens he put a thorn in my side yeah he put a stake in my side and I prayed three times that he would take it out but he didn't take it out he looked at me and said, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, grace overrides a thorn. Look at your neighbor and tell him I got some flaws, but I'm still here. I've got some flaws, but I'm gonna keep coming to the table. I'm gonna keep living for the king because every day favor overrides my flaws. Every time I preach, 
favor overrides my flaws. Every time you sing, favor overrides your flaws. Every time he gets you up in the morning, favor overrides your flaws. You ought to come to the Lord with the sentiments of that song. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. I got to leave you now, but look at your neighbor and tell them, please, don't stop coming to the table. There's joy at the table. There's peace at the table. There are possibilities at the table. There's second chance at the table. There's love at the table. There's hope at the table. There's ministry at the table. There's service at the table. Yeah! Yeah! Open up your mouth and tell him, thank you. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for overriding my flaws. Thank you for all of your joy. Thank you for keeping me. Hallelujah. Come on, is there anybody here who doesn't mind opening up your mouth and tell him, thank you. Thank you that I'm still here. Thank you that I still have a city. Thank you that I still have some seats. Thank you that I still have them service. Yeah! God from Zion. You thought I was worth saving? Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. I don't know of anybody that that word couldn't offer some application to. How sobering of a word. A word that allows us to celebrate the favor of God that is undeniable and unmerited and yet reminds us of our flaws so that we can better appreciate God's favor. My goodness gracious, what a word tonight. Listen, brother, sister, if you are part of this worship experience in person, if you're a part of this worship experience virtually and you don't have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you can have a relationship with a God who can favor you even when he's aware of your flaws and cause his favor to override your flaws even when he doesn't remove all of your flaws. <laughs> My God from Zion. And so if you want that relationship tonight, whoever you are, just say, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe Jesus is that Savior because he died on the cross for my sins. God raised him from the dead for my victory. I want him to come into my heart. If you say that out loud, then you'll be a Christian. The Bible puts it this way. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Maybe you're already a Christian, you have a personal relationship, but you don't have a church home. You're a Christian, been baptized before, but you don't have a church home where you're connected, where you are in fellowship, virtually or in person. Then I want to invite you to become a part of the Mount Calvary Church tonight. You can send us an email, join at mcbcfs.org. It's on the screen for your convenience. Say, I want to be a part of the Mount Calvary Church. 
on my Christian experience, I've accepted Jesus Christ. And I want to stay connected to the Mount Calvary Church. If you're in the room, in the sanctuary, and you're a Christian and you want to become a part of this church because you believe that's God's will, you can come forward even now. We'll pray with you and share information with you to help you. You don't have to walk by yourself. There are leaders and there are servants that are positioning themselves so that you don't have to walk. We're going to sing just a little bit just to give you a little bit more time and opportunity to consider this great decision that God has placed before you tonight. He loves you so much that the Bible says that God sent his only begotten son to die for you so that you might have everlasting life. And so why don't you receive his salvation tonight? Why don't you receive the ultimate favor of God, which is the salvation that he offers in Jesus Christ? Go ahead and sing it. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned Clean. me up inside You thought I was to die for For you sacrificed your life So I could be so I could be oh, so I can tell everyone. Come on, everybody. I know you thought I was worth saving. You came, so you came and changed. You thought I was worth keeping. Come on, make your decision, make your commitment tonight. You thought I was to die for. Worship the Lord. Thank him for loving you that much. Thank him for giving his life for you. Thank him for his favor. Even with your flaws. And I will praise you. I worship you. I'll give you glory. I'll give you honor. You deserve the glory. I worship you forever, forever. You get all the glory. We will trust in you forever. We believe you forever. We trust you forever. forever. What did he do? So you came and saved my life. You thought I was worth keeping. What did he do? So you cleaned me up inside. And you thought I was to die for. So what did he do? You sacrificed your life. You thought I was to die for. Sacrifice One your more time. life. You thought. you thought I was to die for. You sacrificed so your I. life so I could be free yeah, and you. I could be whole and I can tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Would you put your hands together in the sanctuary, online, virtually with us tonight to thank God for his word, thank God for his favor, thank God for him working with us even with our flaws. Would you put your hands together one more time and thank God for his preacher, the Reverend Dr. Jerry M. Carter, Jr. Wow, wow, we. What an awesome word. Easy to understand. Easy to understand. Just simple walking through the word of God. Yeah, God be praised for what we've experienced tonight. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go. We're right where we need to be time-wise. Let me just say this to you. And uh, yes, Lord. I'm going to try to stay out of some of y'all's business. But for some of y'all, the Lord won't let me stop staying in your business. But I'm going to do my best to, to, try to try to just walk up to the line tonight and not, not step over it. Uh, listen, the Lord keeps saying to some of you, what he said tonight. He said it through me. He said it through the preacher tonight. That you got to stop arguing with God about why he can't use you. Now look, look, let me tell you as somebody who tried to run from God, let me tell you as somebody who tried to tell God why he couldn't use me. That God has a way <laughs> that if you won't willfully yield, <laughs> I'll just put it this way, he can get you to yield. Right? How many, how many times does he have to come and unlock the door and open it before you'll finally just say, okay. Yeah. Stop arguing with God about why God can't use you. Stop it. Stop it. He keeps telling you. He knows you. And he still wants to use you. And remember, listen, I ain't going to re-preach the sermon. But what mattered most in that story was that Mephibosheth was where the king wanted him to be. And with everything that everybody knew about him and everything that he knew about himself, no one could disinvite him from that table because he was there at the king's command. And the king didn't ask if Meshavah wanted to come to the table. He told Zeba, if there's anybody from Saul's house, go get them. I'm done for real. I'm just trying to help somebody just, just cross on over and just let the Lord do what the Lord going to do. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. All of you that joined us tonight from around the country and the world, thank you so much for joining us. I know that you were blessed, and I pray that you take this word to heart and that you hold it close and that you allow the Lord to continue to do awesome things in your life. Would you continue to pray for Dr. Carter that God will continue to keep him, to bless him, to honor him, to order his steps, to anoint him, to provide for him, uh, to make ways for him and that the Lord will uh, give him what he needs when he has to fight against the enemy and that when the fight is too much, that the Lord will fight for him. Will you pray that? Now listen, listen, preachers are on the front line and, um, and we're on the enemy's hit list. And so praying for the preacher is critical to the welfare of the troops and the kingdom, all right? And so when I say these things, I'm not, I'm not asking you to just do a casual cavalier kind of little prayer when somebody is as anointed as these men are who are coming through this church this week 
then you know Satan will do any and everything that he can to at least discourage them um, and create despondency for them because he can't destroy them, but he'll try to do whatever he can to discourage and to dishearten, all right? God be praised. Would you lift your hands in the sanctuary and virtually? Father, we thank you for the worship through music tonight. And we thank you, God, for the worship through giving tonight. And we thank you most of all for the worship through the proclamation of your word tonight. God, as we conclude this worship experience, we're better. And we say thank you. We thank you, God, for everything that you reminded us of tonight. May we, oh God, hold it tightly in our bosom and may it result in a yes. Whatever you say, Lord, we thank you now. Bless Dr. Carter. Keep him. Work your plan for his life and your will for his life, but God also grant him the desires of his heart as he delights himself in you so that he, oh God, might have not only joy but some happiness and some fulfillment along the way, including but not exclusive to the preaching and pastoral ministry to which you called him. Give him safe travel when he returns back to New Jersey. May you bless the conference that he has planned and prepared to lead to the benefit of preachers and clergy from all over the country who will gather in New Jersey in another week in order to glean how they can better serve you as preachers of the gospel. Just honor him and prosper him, and we'll give you thanks as we leave this place, but never your presence. And we look forward to returning tomorrow night to share again at 7 o'clock sharp that we may, oh God, enjoy the final installment of this revival through your servant, the Reverend Dr. Carlos Kelly. We bless you and we honor you, and we look forward to what you're going to do in light of what you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Find somebody on your way out. Tell them I'm favored and flawed. <laughs>